Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the lengths of sides of right triangles. If the two legs of a right triangle have lengths A and B, and by legs we're talking about the sides that touch the right angle in the right triangle, and the hypotenuse has length C, and the hypotenuse refers to the side opposite the right angle, which by the way is always the longest side, then the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. In other words, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So anytime you have a situation where you're given a right triangle and you know two of the sides and you're looking for the third side, you can apply the Pythagorean theorem. So here we have a right triangle where one leg is length three and the hypotenuse is length five, and we're looking for the other leg. Now it's important to know which side is missing because there's a difference between finding a leg and finding the hypotenuse. Here's what I mean. Write down a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you're going to replace either a or b, it doesn't really matter which one, with the length of the leg that you know. So three squared. I replaced a with 3 squared. I don't know the other leg, so I'm just going to leave b in there. Um, but I do know that the hypotenuse is 5, so I'm going to replace c with 5. So we have 3 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. So that means 9 plus b squared is equal to 25. Now, we have solved equations where we have a variable squared equal to a number using the square root property, but you have to have that variable squared by itself. So I need to get b squared by itself, which I can do by subtracting nine from both sides of the equal sign to keep things balanced. So now I'm gonna get b squared by itself equals 16. Now that I have a variable squared equal to a number, that's in the form to use the square root property. So we know that b has to be either positive or negative square root of 16, which means b is positive or negative 4. But this is the length of a side of a triangle. It's not ever going to be negative. So that means that we can disregard the negative possibility and just say that that third side is length 4. Now let's look at an example where we're finding the hypotenuse. So what if I told you that one leg is length six, the other is length eight, this is in a right triangle, and we're missing the side opposite the right angle, which means we're missing the hypotenuse. So when I fill in a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's the letter c that's unknown. So we have 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. By the way, it doesn't matter if you put 8 squared plus 6 squared or 6 squared plus 8 squared. The legs are interchangeable. The one that has to be uh, unique is the hypotenuse, the c. That has to be the side opposite the right angle. So this gives us 36 plus 64 equals c squared, which means 100 is equal to c squared. So here we have the situation where we have a variable squared equal to a number, we can use the square root property. So if c squared equals 100, that means that c is either plus or minus the square root of 100. Square root of 100 is 10, so c is equal to plus or minus 10. But again, we're working with the length of a side of an object. You can't have a negative length, so you just use c equals 10. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.